after the King Philip War, uh, there was another clear title to this land. And so uh, 300, 341 years later, we still, uh, we still have to ask permission to come on our ancestral high grounds. Uh, this is where they killed King Philip. This was our principal village. And uh, we've done everything we can to engage the people uh, of the state of Rhode Island, those authorities, uh, and uh, they don't want to speak to us. Uh, they know that they've taken the land illegally. Uh, the way the land was transferred was uh, uh, breaking a twig off a tree, picking up a clod of dirt from the ground and just handing it to the syndicate out of Boston, and that's how the land was transferred. And no uh, member of my family ever signed this ad. I'm a direct descendant of the Massasoit uh, King Philip. Uh, no one that we know has ever signed a title to uh, uh, turn this land over to the uh, people that have it now or those that were here before them. So we had come today to occupy and to take back that who was taken from us illegally. So hopefully we'll be able to take and bring uh, Brown to the table, maybe on these grounds, and uh, we'll be able to talk. Negotiate because we want the land back. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna uh, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, what you still ground keeping or do you retire? Yeah, I did. I kind of keep an eye on things because sometimes you get groups unexpectedly. So, oh, okay. So I didn't notice until I came down that uh, obviously it was a legitimate. That's Kyle. That's my one of three. Aquanini Tampag, new to East Nisu, wish you one to Mashi Pog, now he gets it. Uh, Scott the Squamps, peace be unto you, family. I'm Two Hawks from the Mashi Pog, now he gets it, tribe. How are you all doing? Uh, today I am here in the capacity of Director General for the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America, supporting the Poconoke Nations' repatriation of their ancestral lands of Potumtuk. Uh, very honored to be here because we feel like this is the start of something really new for Indigenous folks here on the East Coast. So, for all of you that are out there, Peace and blessings to you all, um, and if you're feeling warrior enough and you want to come up and check us out, come in a good way, and we welcome you. Uh -huh. Hey, you <laughs> hey. 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 How you doing, bro? Hi. Hey. Director General for the Federation and Aboriginal Nations of America. Pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Chief, you want to come over? Yeah. Just hang tight. Look at the, the boss. Man. Absolutely, no problem. That way you don't have to say it twice. Give you a business card. Apply the law, follow the law. The land is theirs already on paper. The land is theirs by bloodline. The land is theirs to, to, to inhabit and, and invite their guests to, and that's all we're doing. So even law enforcement, if you want to come down, if you want to help us celebrate, if you want to learn some more about the culture, you're welcome on down. We just ask that everyone come in a good way. That's it. That gate's up. Yeah. Okay, we're well, happy that's for them now too and introducing to some people. Alright, All right, have a great day. Alright, All right. take care. Um, the Sagamore was talking to the woman who was letting the water get used and all that. She said she called Brown and told him, I told you all this was going to happen. So, <laughs> put good money. Alright. Alright. Alright, all right. All right. All right. that sounds good. Have it good. Alright, we'll see you. Alright. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got everything unloaded, and they did that thing. Okay, because I understand it's Brown University, but this is my town. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. And I know you guys have been very respectful, and I thank you for that Absolutely. very much. Um, any issues with them? Please call me the station. No problem. Okay. All right. Can I, I just give you my business card. You can reach me directly right there. We got a mutual friend, brother. Who's that? You know Todd Down? Yes! Yes! Oh, all right! My best friends, brother. Ah, very good. I haven't right. seen him in a bit. I recognize your, your face. 
Yes. I said I saw you at the wedding. Yeah, there you go. There you go, <laughs> brother. World, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know Rhode Island. What's that girl that name? <laughs> what's his name? You got two or something. Wow, what's his other name? <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Hey, hey if you talk to Todd, tell him I said hello, uh, man. Take care, brother. All right. Uh, they did let us know that you all were coming up here. Mm -hmm. We have been in communication with your superiors for a number of months. This land has been repatriated by law. We've got, we already taken it into trust. They just refused to have conversation with us. Last year, the Sagamore came here and put a flag up. Someone took the flag down. All right. He explained to them that is an act of war. You don't do that to a nation. There is no clear title to this land. There is no allodial title to this land. And now the Sagamore has an aboriginal title to this land. We would, if necessary, be willing to go to court to hash it out, but they won't talk to us. When we pull aside, we'll talk on the side. Absolutely. So pull over right uh -huh. here, sir. Yeah, you can back over here. Uh, yeah, you can back up right over here. Yeah, that's out of the way. Pocahontas, uh, on the side of the Massasoit. Uh, that packet there is all the... Uh, that was for the first question? No, no, this no, is for you. That's actually yeah. getting delivered to Al Dahlberg tomorrow. That was just a uh, couple letters. Right. If, if you go in there, there's a whole packet of uh, yeah. what we've done. Well, I was just out here trying to find out what's going on. Absolutely. Because yeah. this is new to me. And Absolutely. Yeah. And we want to do this peacefully. We Absolutely. Do, uh, We're all about what you want Absolutely. But if you open that packet up, you'll see that we've already uh, repatriated the land. So oh, no, hold it's on. on. It's all been recorded. In the hold on, it's this one actually. It's this one, I'm sorry. Oh, you gave him the wrong Yeah, I gave him the wrong. Oh, too too right, many okay. plastics going on. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Now, about how many people you have here, you know? Uh, it depends, because we're doing ceremony right now. Now, do you have quarter parties and everything? Yeah, everything, and actually the so, woman down there is allowed for use of the space there for anyone right. who needs to use the bathroom mm -hmm. and water, right. so the neighbors are all good. water and everything? Yeah, everything's yeah. good. Right. Well, she's been in contact with uh, Brown. They're, okay. they're aware that we're, we're the last ones to yeah. so know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Can you just give me a name? I'll explain that you went through all the paperwork. Oh, right? yeah. I'm the Sagamore of the Pocahontas. Do you have your ID, so you just got your information down? So should I get mine as well? Oh, yeah, I got my business card, yeah. but I can get the ID as well. Five letters to the governor, oh, all right. the attorney yeah, general, the, report. Uh, the so secretary of your side. You know? That's my tribal ID and that's my fauna card, which gets me into the United Nations. All right. I'm the superior chief of fauna, which is the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America, in which capacity I represent over 7,000 Indians. And so how you pronounce your name? Paul Wahopi Neopo. Winds of Thunder. Oh, yeah, come on. Come with us to tear gas us. Yeah. That's what happens to indigenous people when they try to take protect their land and I understand that, but like, what are you guys getting at exactly? Though? So like, that land. Are you gonna like forcefully hold this land now, or like, are you just doing this to make a point, to make videos? Well, we're hoping. Everyone's no, we want Brown to come and sit and talk with us because for the past year they've ignored our, our emails, they've ignored our phone calls. Because we wouldn't be down here like this if Brown would come and sit at the table like they're supposed to. And the issue is, we've done everything we need to do lawfully. So they're just not even uh, listening to the law now, and that's a serious problem. You know, this man, he's been working with this for how many years? So for him to be out here doing this before now, you obviously, know, you this problem, obviously right? there's an issue if, he's, if we're actually out here doing this now, because we're peace-loving people. Right. As long as they thought we didn't have a clear title, they were willing to sit and communicate and, oh, if there was something we could do, we'd help you. As soon as we said, okay, we did it, you can help, no conversation anymore. And that was a year ago. So, bro, imagine you. It's your land. Yeah. You tell the people, look, it's our land. We're ready. You told us for all these years, if there was a way to help us out, you would help us, help us. And they stopped talking. Hi, my name is Sophia. Um, I am Poconoket from Rhode Island. Um, we were just getting on the land, getting set up um, at one of our possible checkpoints and um, one of the locals came by and ran over some of the stuff we had on the side of the road, sped off and then came back, slowed down, came back and then hopped out of his car and started swearing at us, telling us that this is I live here, you're blocking my road, why are you here? Um, you know, he was a young white guy, shirtless, buzz cut, just looked, he felt like this was his place, you know, and he was like, I get that the tribe is here and, and trying to get their land, but you have no right to be here. Um, then he told us that, um, he said, um, y'all are white anyways, you're white, you're white, you're white. 
you might be Indian, but you don't look Indian. You're probably not even Indian, right? And then, um, and then he, you know, picked up some of the things, he threw them off the side of the road. There was a metal pole we were using to move things. He picked it up and he threw it over the fence. Um, he was like, y'all are trying to be vi non-violent. Watch, I'm gonna be violent. I'll be back. I'll be, I'll be violent. I'll show you. Um, and so I had to step in and I said, listen, like, you know, our our tribal leader is up uh, up front. If you want to talk to him about what what's going on, when we're gonna, you know, what decisions are gonna be made, and um, and our folks are gathering. So, um, and then he eventually, you know, saw that I wasn't gonna say anything else, and and he left to go to go bother other Indians. Oh, yeah, well, this there is his dancer stick, mm -hmm. Rave Hot's dancer stick, <laughs> that he carved from a, uh, a family that went to pear tree that passed over. It died, but he came back. Yeah. And uh, this is some of the, uh, uh, you know, the branches that uh, were, dead. were dead, and he uh, took them and he carved uh, the history of our people. Nice. The Poconokit, which we are, not Wampanoag. He's got the five clans on here. He's got the, the turtle, Tunapasag. He's got the deer, a took. He's got the bear, musk. He's got the wolf, Makoshim. And he's got the Satan. snipe. Don't forget Satan down there. He's got oh, the snipe. <laughs> and of course, yeah, he's got yeah. the crow, which brought us the beans, the corn, oh, and the squash, and we call the three sisters. Mm -hmm. He's brave heart. Cannot pay what time? Cannot pay what And that's the heart that he carved on his dick. He's got the <laughs> wampum, wampum yeah. made from core mm -hmm. hog. The oh, white portion was uh, wampy and the purple portion was sacky. And he's got the uh, the sun, the stars of the Poconokets. He's even got the uh, the serpent. We uh, that's the devil. So he's here too. So he put him on the stick as well. And that's uh, he's going to pass this down to his uh, to his family and his grandchildren, and hopefully they'll uh, keep it in the family and uh, dance with it one day. Like Braveheart. <laughs> 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 We're not recognized. We're not by the recognized. So we're not Indian. So you're not Indian. And okay. so that we, you know, what we're doing let's, let's, isn't let's right. Let's take out the map from 1600 <laughs> and show them all the Poconoga things all over the map. Oh, we had a DPW truck come down yesterday, and uh, they stopped by, claiming to be wanted to know if we needed anything and then he wanted to know if he wanted uh, him to pick up our garbage and we actually told him no and then he asked if we needed any uh, barrels that they put in the road for construction and he said he would be back to deliver those Patapawani, that's good morning in our language. Uh, I'm Powapi Neopug, and uh, we're here this morning to uh, represent the Poconoke Nation. I'm here with some of the representatives of our nation, and uh, also the uh, FANA, uh, which is the Federation of Aborig Aboriginal Nations of America. Uh, this meeting uh, this morning is our initial meeting with the uh, uh, the attorneys and powers to be at Brown University about the land here at uh, uh, repatriating the land back into the Poconoke Nation's uh, possession. And uh, hopefully uh, the Creator will smile on us this day and uh, and uh, have the heart of, heart of the King in his hands. Chief Sequin Pajeke, Chairman as well as Chief of the Pocasset Poconoke Tribe of the Poconoke Nation. I hope. Chief Nikat Amatsukov of the Amatsukov Kiskiak clan and the Chief De Development Officer for the Fauna. My name is Kwakwe Connect, which means running deer, and I'm on the Royal Council of Seven of the Poconoke tribe, Poconoke Nation, and we're here to reclaim our sacred land. Rocky, Chief of the Ninigret Nahantik Nahakens tribe, here to, here to support the indigenous and reclaim of indigenous lands here to support my brothers. Aguanina Tawamag, that's to say peace be unto you family. I am Nisu Wushawanag, Pumham Sachem of the Meshipag Nyagansett Tribe and Director General of the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America and we're excited to be here in solidarity and support with the Poconoke Tribe with the Poconoke Nation. Aho.
Well, I mean, hey, they're claiming this, claiming that. Bring them down here. We'll talk with them. They're not like you. We know what they're, we know what they're all about. Well, Ray, I know you remember everything that was out there better than I do, because you sure were doing a lot of drawing, so we'll, we'll let you... This, this was our initial meeting uh, with the uh, powers to be at Brown University, and uh, uh, we we expect to uh, meet with them again. Of course, we have to go back to the council. When they started the conversation off, trying to assert what authority they think that they have here on the land, they started talking about... Um, what their feelings are and what they want to see and basically the argument is that they're not going to negotiate until the encampment ends uh, that's pretty much what their argument is you know they went into all of the laws they believe are on their side and that they've been working with certain tribes and this that and the other and we just categorically took every argument that they make and shut it down um, the notion that tribes from down the Cape would somehow have the same right as the tribe that's from here to these lands uh, the notion that somehow, despite the fact that the land was unlawfully transferred, they still have ownership to it. Uh, the notion that somehow, some way, they would actually win in court and that they'd be willing to go to court. The process of proving who you are, even though they know who you are. And then at the end of it, they create a tribal trust and they stopped teaching trust law here in the U.S. in the 30s, I think. Mm -hmm. And they also stopped teaching Latin so you wouldn't understand the law. Um, they create a trust for you. Write all your history in the trust and all that. And then they insert the U.S. Congress as your caretaker instead of your tribal council. That's all federal recognition is. And then what they do is they give some of the Indians federal recognition, some of the Indians not, so that the Indians stop fighting against each other. Because, well, how we have the same bloodline, and how did you get it, and I did it? Well, it's because you guys aren't real Indians, and all of that foolishness comes out of it. So what the Poconocas have done, and what all of the Fauna Member Nations have done, is through research we found that you don't have to have a federal tribal trust, you can create an international tribal trust according to what they call hate trust treaty standards. And it was this international trust treaty, all of these nations signed on to it including the US and it basically says that if you create a trust by these provisions it will be acknowledged as a viable commercial entity wherever you're at and the US acknowledges that. So the Poconocas, all the fauna we created private foreign American Aborigine tribal trust, not federal trust. And once we did that, it now not only put us on an equal level with any of the federally recognized tribes, but it put us on a superior level because we're not under the U.S. Congress. And without that federal recognition relationship, they don't have any lawful claims to these lands. But they are refusing to open their mouths up because they know the moment they open their mouths up, all of their lies get uncovered. And they're willing to let all of these institutions and other people fight this fight for them. And I guarantee you when it hits the fan, they're going to stop pointing fingers at all of the people who are trying to defend them, saying that it's your fault. Because that's what they've been doing. And that's what we shared with them up there. <laughs> and as we walked away, he said, we'll be looking forward to seeing you around. So as we keep up the spirit of the encampment here, because they're not coming in here. No one's coming in here. I explained to them. I said, Bristol's not coming in here to help you. The state troopers aren't coming in here to help you. The only ones you could get to come in here to help you would be the feds, and the feds aren't going to come in here to help you. And I don't think any of your brown police officers are going to come in here to help you once they realize what's at stake and that they might lose their livelihood. So I would suggest, suggest that you guys stay out. And they just got very quiet. So they're not going to come in here. That's simple. And if they do come in here, a leaning and a torting, we will go. And that's why we said at the original action camp, if they want to arrest, let them arrest. Because you all are here by invitation of a sovereign nation. And what right do they have to tell you you can't be here? And if you're here by our permission, then they need to show the authority to tell you y'all can't be here. And they can't win that battle in court. They're not going to try to win that battle in court. We've already met with everyone that we can meet, and they all keep saying the same thing. <clears throat> so they're going to leave us alone. That's why they've been leaving us alone for a week. I mean, who really believes that the state troopers wouldn't have run in here and dragged everyone out by now if they could have? Of course they would have. They, you know, they're animals in certain places.